Good evening. My name is Mark Sign, Minister of the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey. I would like to extend this opportunity to welcome you to our PM services, our evening services, for uh, Sunday, October the 30th. Uh, we're going to sing several songs. I will give you the names and the numbers. We sing from Songs of Faith and Praise. Perhaps you don't have that book, but you can Google the song. Uh, maybe you have a different book, so I'll make sure to give you the name to give you time so that you can sing along with us. The first song that we're going to sing is number 704. The title of the song is Bind Us Together. 704, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, Bind Us Together. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together with love. There is only one God, there is only one King. There is only one body, that is why we can sing. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together with love. And if you would turn to number 709, 709, how sweet, how heavenly, how sweet, how heavenly, 709. <coughs> <coughs> How sweet, how heavenly is the sight when those that love the Lord in one another's peace delight and so fulfill the word. When each can feel his brother's sigh and with him bear a part. When sorrow flows from eye to eye and joy from heart to heart. When free from envy, scorn, and pride, our wishes all above, each can his brother's failings hide and show a brother's love. When love in one delightful stream through every bosom flows, when union sweet and dear esteem in every action glows, Love is the golden chain that binds the happy souls above, and he's an heir of heaven who finds his bosom glow with love. 
prepare our minds for the Lord's Supper. If you would turn to number 335 in memory of the Savior's love. <clears throat> 335 in memory of the Savior's love. <clears throat> In memory of the Savior's love, we keep the sacred feast, where every humble, contrite heart is made a welcome guest. By faith we take the bread of life with which our souls are fed. The cup in token of his blood that was for sinners shed. Beneath his banner, <coughs> thus we sing the wonders of his love. And here anticipate by faith the heavenly feast of we sang this song to prepare our minds for the Lord's Supper. And as the song says, we do this in memory of the Savior's love. We keep this sacred feast. We call it communion. We call it the Lord's Supper. I think in Spanish, uh, we call it uh, Santa Cena. And uh, either way, it is the time that is devoted to breaking uh, bread together on the first day of the week as we were instructed to do in the first century. As we gather together, we gather together in memory of the Savior's love, where all of us can be contrite. We can have a contrite heart as we reflect on the love of our God and of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And it is indeed by faith that we take the bread of life with which our souls are fed. And so as we partake this bread, a symbol of Jesus's body, which uh, writhed in pain on the cross, we remember the sacrifice that Jesus made for each of us one time, one time, that uh, we might uh, draw closer to our God through that sacrifice. Let's pray for the bread. Our Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that your divine plan was so wonderful. We're, we're so grateful that you sent your son, that he left your right side, and that he came down to earth and lived as humans live, feeling everything that humans feel, yet being the divine son of God. And it is that human being and that divine son that died on the cross that was in pain, that his body was wracked with that pain, that he was willing to do that for each of us. As we partake of this bread, help us to remember that. We pray it in his most holy name, amen. The song says the cup and token of his blood that was for sinners shed. We're the sinners. He shed his blood for us. It was part of God's wonderful divine plan that through the blood of Jesus, our sins could be forgiven. So as we partake of this fruit of the vine, let's remember the blood that was shed for the forgiveness of our sins. Our Heavenly Father, we're grateful that Jesus was willing to shed his innocent blood that for a short period of time he was separated from the father as uh, his body was in pain and the blood flowed from it as we partake of this fruit of the vine help us to understand 
that it is the blood of salvation. It is the blood of forgiveness. That only through the blood of Jesus can our sins be forgiven. Help us to remember that as we partake, we pray it in his most holy name. Amen. This completes the Lord's Supper, but there's one other thing that we do on the first day of the week, and that is we give back to the Lord that with which we have prospered. This began in the Old Testament, where Abraham gave a tenth of all he had. It was called a tithe, and uh, this has woven its way down through time into the New Testament. Uh, it's different now. We're not required to give a tenth. The scriptures say we are to give as we have prospered and we are to lay by and store. Do you see what that connotes? That says to us that we are to remember that we need to give back to the Lord and lay by and store. It should be part of our, our regular budgetary uh, 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 devices, I guess, uh, in our lives that we remember that we must give back. Let's pray for the giving. We're grateful to Heavenly Father that we're able to give. Help us to give with gratitude. Help us to understand that we give to you, but you're your own. Help <coughs> us to understand that indeed we come into this world with nothing. We will leave this world with nothing from a physical standpoint. We pray that the monies that are used will be for the furtherance of your work, that it may help others, that we may also be able to help those in need as we are instructed to do so in the scriptures, that when we are instructed to do good to all, this is part of our doing good to all. Be with us as we give, we pray in his most holy name. Amen. The last song we'll sing before the lesson is number 162. An old song. It's called, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. If you want to know how old, it goes back to the 1780s. All hail the power of Jesus' name, let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him, Lord of all. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him, Lord of all. Ye chosen seed of Israel's race, ye ransom from the fall. Hail him who saves you by his grace, and crown him, Lord of all. Hail him who saves you by his grace, and crown him, Lord of all. Let every kindred, every tribe on this terrestrial wall, to him all majesty ascribe, and crown him Lord of all. To him all majesty ascribe, and crown him Lord of all. Oh, that with yonder sacred crown we at his feet may fall. We'll join the everlasting song and praise him, Lord of all. We'll 
join the everlasting song and praise Him, Lord of all. We enjoyed singing with you. I hope the Lord was praised and uh, we were lifted up in song. For those of you who were there this morning, uh, you know that the title of uh, my lesson this evening is Something More Than Ourselves. Something More Than Ourselves. The, uh, I guess the beginning of all this, <laughs> pardon my pun, the genesis of all of this is found in Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. When God had uh, made his creations, he created man from the dust of the earth. And from man, he created woman. Why? God put it simply. It says in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. So this begs the question, are we self-sufficient creatures? Sometimes we like to think we are, that uh, we can pretty well fulfill our needs. Uh, you've given us uh, abilities and talents to make our way in life. However, what is it about contact with other people that is so special? Hmm. We need contact with others. We need contact with others who have a nature that corresponds to ours. In regular old everyday jargon, this is called a relationship. And we've been constituted such that our needs sometimes just can't be fulfilled within our, within our own identities. And so the scriptures are, are just filled with verses that have to do with our being with one another, of our relationships with one another. And if they don't say it specifically, they say it vicariously. There's an inference here. If I digress for a moment, it, it's part of what uh, the social media is all about, isn't it? People want that relationship with others. And so there they are. They're on Twitter. They're on Facebook. They're on the various social media platforms interfacing with one another. They are, I guess, in their own ways, trying to build their relationships. And so in essence, what I'm trying to drive at this evening is, is that we need something more than ourselves something outside of ourselves. Now, the Lord put it very succinctly at creation time. He said it was not good for man to be alone. All right. Now, how much human contact do we have with each other? You know, it varies, doesn't it? There are people that need human contact all the time, while there are others that limit their human contact to just a very, very select, uh, small amount of people. But we do, I believe, I, I know it's true for me, uh, need an amount of human contact, uh, a human relationship. And I think we need that to be happy in our lives. When Jesus was asked 
What's the greatest command? We know this. We can probably quote the scripture verbatim. You know, you will love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind. But he didn't stop there. He thought it was really, really important that we go to the next level. And I'm going to come back to this. And he said, the second is to love your neighbor as yourself. And so in these verses, to me, what we have is relationship building. To love your Lord, your God, with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and all of your mind is, to me, a, a direct statement to us that we have to have a relationship with God. We have to love our God with every fiber of our being. But again, he goes further and he says, we must love our neighbor as ourself. You know, some of us can get by with a minimum of things and some of us need more. Uh, others find it hard to be happy without more. Again, I, I go back to the, to the social media. Uh, people are constantly on their, uh, cellular devices. I see it all the time. I see it everywhere. You watch a baseball game and you see people in the stands and part of the time they're watching the game and part of the time they're relating with other people. Isn't that interesting? It is all about these uh, relationships. Now, uh, could you and I live on a desert island on our own? I guess it's a moot point, isn't it? If we were on it there by ourselves, uh, we would have to, wouldn't we? Uh, even though there's a need for human relationship, if we were under those conditions, there would not be any of that human relationship because there wouldn't be anybody else. We don't live in a world like that. We live in a world that is filled with other people. Hence, love your neighbor as yourself. In the 10th chapter of the book of Hebrews, uh, verse 24, it, it says to consider how to stimulate, ready, one another toward love and good deeds. Consider how to stimulate one another toward love and good deeds. And so this is what relationships are all about within uh, the, the Christian religion. Our relationships are all about stimulating one another, of encouraging one another. We want to be better and we want others to be better. So we do what we can to stimulate them. Now, verse 25 uh, is tied together with verse 24 that says, forsaking not the assembly as some do. In the first century, almost immediately after uh, first Christians were baptized, within days and weeks, they were meeting in one another's homes. They, were, they weren't worshiping the Lord solely by themselves, but with other people, which is what um, we've been instructed to do. Love your neighbor as yourself. In Galatians uh, chapter 6 and verse 10, the Apostle Paul says, don't be weary in doing good. But he says, while you have opportunity, do good to all people, especially those of the household of faith. I don't know about you, but this engenders to me relationships. The Apostle Paul, Holy Spirit inspired, is telling us to do good 
to all people. We can do that only when we are in contact with them. That being said, the most important relationship that we have on this planet is our relationship with God, our creator. And what God has told us is we need something above ourselves and we need something even above our relationship with others. And the relationship with God, I would contend, is one that we simply cannot do without. Now, we may delude ourselves, and that's what we're doing if we do that. We're deluding ourselves. We may delude ourselves into thinking that we're getting along without him. And you know what? For a while, in fact, we probably, <laughs> maybe, do less damage to ourselves trying to do without oxygen than trying to do without God. I went right to the, to the heart of things. We need to breathe this air, which is, consists of 20% oxygen, which is what makes everything tick inside of our bodies. And so we contend here that we, we would do just as you know, much damage. We delude ourselves into thinking that our, without a relationship with God, it would be kind of similar to us without having any oxygen for our bodies. So whether it's relationship to other human beings or relationship to God, there is a word that just kind of interjects itself into this and it's called loneliness and loneliness to me describes the um, describes the absence of any relationships and you know what well we might think that there are problems in the world that are much deeper and more severe than uh, loneliness let me tell you that a life without the Spirit of the Lord in us is a terrible, terrible, terrible thing. It's terrible not because it's physically painful, because it's the root of many problems that plague us as humans and especially as Christians having been created by God, going back to Genesis chapter 2. It's not good for us to be alone. And having uh, been created by our God uh, with needs that can only be filled in a relationship with others, and when those needs are not filled, many harmful things can happen to us. And I think that is why people feel the way they do. It's why these folks, uh, uh, so many on social media, reach out to others constantly. Part of it is to share things. You know, I'm at a ball game. I'm having a great time. Let me share this with you. Let me make a video of the field. Let me show you what's going on. Share this with me. It's a, it's something that I'm really enjoying. I would like you to enjoy it with me. It, it's part of what we do. And we do that in all aspects of our life. I love the Lord's word. Let me share it with you. We can only share it with people if we develop a relationship with them. There is a type of relationship building that's called friendship evangelism. It's where we, uh, we try to, uh, let people know and teach people, uh, based upon our relationship with them. And the stronger our relationship comes, uh, becomes, the easier it is for us to, uh, 
explain to us, to them, what being a part of the Lord's body is all about. And so being created by God with needs that can only be filled with relationships with others and with God, uh, we have to have those so harmful things will not happen to us. So as we, as we close, what's, what's the point of this? It's simply that we ought to cherish within ourselves a rich relationship, both with God and with others, especially those of the household of faith, especially with others, because all of us have been created in the image of God. We, we ought to work on building our relationship in every way that we can. And then after we build it, it's kind of like having a home or having a car. After we build it, after we have it, we have to maintain it. We can't drive a car without making sure there's not enough air in the tires, enough gas in the tank, whether the oil has been changed, all the things that need to do to maintain our car. The same with our house. We have to make sure that the roof is good. We have to make sure that all of the things in the house that, you know, the air conditioner that cools us, the heater that warms us, the hot water heater that gives us warm water so we can clean our bodies, that all of these things are working. It's called maintenance. You say, oh, I got a house. That's good enough. No, it's not. And we might say also, I have a relationship. Bingo. No. There's something about that relationship that only works if we work at maintaining the relationship. And the relationship building that we have, the relationship maintenance that we have, ought to be one of the things in our lives that perhaps is the most pressing of everything. The poet and writer John Milton centuries ago said this, loneliness is the first thing that God's eye named not good. Loneliness is the first thing that God's eye named not good. It began in the creation where God said, it's just not good for us to be alone. We have to work at building relationships, both relationships with others and relationship, a relationship with our God. We are to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind. And we are to love our neighbor as ourselves. This is relationship building and relationship maintaining. That it's part of our fiber. See, there's something more than ourselves if we are to live a rich life that God would have us to live. As Christians, we have that wonderful opportunity because we have a relationship with other people that are on the same walk that we are. They, they're striving for the same goal that we're striving for. And so with that in mind, we try to stimulate one another on toward love and good deeds. It starts with us being a child of God. And I offer to you this evening, if you haven't become a child of God, the scriptures are very specific that we need to confess Jesus as the Son of God, repent of our former lives, and be baptized for the remission of our sins. If your heart has been touched and it's something that you have been reading about and contemplating, uh, if you need any of us, call us. We will be there uh, to help you and aid you in becoming a child of God. As we close, let's pray together. 
Our God and Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that you care for us and you love us. We're grateful that we can have a relationship both with you and your son and a relationship with those like-minded people. And as we go on our Christian walk, we know that that walk is impossible without a relationship with you. It's impossible without the help of others in our lives that can encourage us and stimulate us. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, to understand how important that is and help us to understand that there is something in life more important than ourselves. And as we, as we walk down the path of life, as we walk down the path that is geared toward living with you forever, I just pray, dear Heavenly Father, that uh, we would build and maintain these healthy relationships that we should. I pray that you would be with us. Help us to uh, keep the word of God within our hearts and pick up our Bibles every day and read and meditate upon it. Bless us, dear Heavenly Father. I pray that you would give us the comfort we need to live a life that is worthy of the calling of Christian. We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Please be safe and may God bless you all. Oh,